Good morning. Welcome to East Columbus United Methodist Church. Uh, I'd like to say a special welcome to the Boy Scouts and Bruce and for them being here this morning. I uh, have a few announcements. First of all, as always, please register your attendance in the red attendance books. Grace's Table will be Sunday, February 12th at 5 p.m. Ash Wendy's service will be February 22nd at 5 p.m. And there'll be a birthday open house for Betty Schaefer Saturday, February 11th from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Brown County Health and Living in the Meeting Room. Everyone is invited to come and celebrate Betty's 92nd birthday. Please stand as the Boy Scouts lead us in the pledges and oaths. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Scout salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. No more scouters, please join me in the Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country to obey the scout laws, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Please join me in the scout laws. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. Color guard, post the colors. Now that you've gotten comfortable staying, please, we're going to sing Beautiful, Terrible Cross. And you may notice today we're singing this about the cross and we're doing the choir song about the cross. And there are churches who want to remove the cross. They find it objectionable and offensive, but without the cross, we've got nothing. So we're going to sing about the cross here. a beautiful, terrible cross, or do you commit in the sea? Savior, you suffer the most wicked fate, and the cruelest creation of man. Yet on the beautiful, terrible cross, you did what only you could. For evil of hell into our soul's greatest good. We 
see the life that you love. We bow in wonder and praise you for the beautiful, terrible cross. There on the beautiful, terrible cross, darkness was strong on the head. As your perfect plan was fulfilled, see the love that you showed us. We see the love that you love. We bow in wonder and praise you. You're the beautiful, terrible cross. Oh, we gain the riches of heaven. Jesus, you pay the honorable call. We stand forgiven and praise you for the beautiful, terrible cross. For the beautiful, terrible cross. In the cross, in the cross. sermon, they're going to talk about the Beatitudes. And Pastor Lee is going to talk about the first one. And I'm going to get my glasses on because I think I know what it is. But, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now you know a lot of people think that the Beatitudes are just a bunch of really pretty words. But they're not. They're sort of like the Ten Commandments, but a little bit different. This is, the Beatitudes is the way of Jesus telling us, this is what you'll get when you do the good things. So when it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, it doesn't mean that you're sad. It doesn't mean that you're sad. It means that you recognize that you need God, that God is what is going to bring you happiness and salvation. So when you read the Beatitudes, read them with a happy heart because that's how they're intended for you to be happy. Because Beatitude actually means greatly blessed. And there's a song that is one of my favorites that I was going to say to Terry, okay, we need to go into greatly blessed now, but <laughs> we, we won't. But remember, as you read the Beatitudes, and I think there's 10 of them, 10, 12, somebody remind me. Um, remember to read them with a happy heart because this is, this is what, the, uh, what Jesus gave us to help us to know what we need to do, how we need to live so that we make it to heaven and we live a happy life. All right, let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for, for all of the words in the Bible. We thank you for the Ten Commandments. And we thank you for the Beatitudes, which was the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. Help us to read your word, all of your words, with a happy heart, knowing that you love us and that the Bible is ours to, to learn and to understand how you want us to live so that one day, we will go to heaven and be with you forever. In your name we pray, amen. Let it shine. 
morning. Uh, this is the now we I invite you to share the joys and concern you have. After that, we'll pray together. So let's share our joys and concern. If we could, I would like to sing Happy Birthday to Betty. She sings it to all of us, and I would like to sing it and I'll make sure it's left on the video. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good idea. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Benny, happy birthday to you. Okay, let's take a moment to pray about what we have heard today and also our personal prayers. So let's pray together. 
mercies from my wandering and going astray. Since Jesus came into my heart, and my sins which were many and all was the light, then Jesus said, blessings. You bless us in so many areas of our lives, in places we often fail to recognize as a blessing. Help us have eyes to see and hearts to understand the depth of your love and blessing. Today we give out of that grace, dedicating ourselves to lives of justice and love, giving all that we are and all that we have to bring about your beloved community here and now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated.
Scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. And as Kathy said this morning, this is when Jesus is teaching and preaching about the Beatitudes. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will seek God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets and who were before you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Please, children, or dismiss it for the children's church. Morning. Let's greet each other with this word. May peace be with you. 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 <clears throat> Today, especially Boy Scout members are together in our worship. Thank you for joining uh, the worship. And we pray that God's glory spread through our Scout Troop 549. Today, I want to share about the eight beatitudes of Jesus' sermon on the mountain. And I want to share this in three parts. The first part is God's blessing toward us. The second is blessing towards our neighbors. And the third is the blessing of dedication toward God. Before we start, let's look at the background of this scripture. After Jesus began his public ministry, he preached the gospel of the heavenly kingdom. He healed sick people and cast out evil spirits from people. The news about his miracles spread quickly 
and many people flocked to Jesus. They were all people seeking temporal and material blessings. Even the disciples needed to understand all the profound teachings of Jesus. So today, Jesus is teaching about true blessings that were totally different from the world. First of all, Jesus teaches us about true blessings towards us. Let's read aloud Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 and 4 together. 3 and 4. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who moan, for they will be comforted. Amen. There are true blessings toward us in the Beatitudes. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. And those who are pure in heart. These are things that cannot be called blessings according to the standard of the word. But in God's eyes, these are true blessings. I meditated deeply on the meaning of the poor in spirit and mourning. The phrase being poor in spirit can have many meanings. I thought about the word, word poor. Sometimes we find God's blessing comes when we are in poor conditions or in poverty. Because of that lacking, our souls become humble and poor as well. When I came to the United States first, I also had, I had a financial difficulties. So I worked a part-time driving job while studying. I, I even worried about the rent I had to pay right away. But I could pray to God earnestly because that was such a desperate situation. Oh God, help me. Help me to overcome this difficult situation. And looking back on my life, God has always helped me in that desperate situation. God's grace was always in there. And when I observed the heart of those prayers, I realized that prayer is more earnest when I have lack and weaknesses than when everything is abundant. Another meaning of being poor in spirit is that our souls feel hunger and thirst, not only our stomach. And this is the nature of all humans. We are created by God and we are in God's image. We are God's image. So when we had perfect communion with God, we did not have that hunger. We're always full. But after we, we were separated from God due to Adam's sin, we felt an inevitable sense of incompleteness. Before Adam's sin, you know, we're not even hungry if we did not eat. But now, we feel hungry. And we need to eat. Food. And also, we have to work and sweat to get that food. Our souls are always unstable without God. That is our nature. And our souls are bound to yearn. So, we need God. So, God wants our spiritual hunger directed toward God. The original place. 
Therefore, the thirsty and poor heart toward God is blessed. But sometimes some people try to fill that hunger with something else. Some fill it with money, and some fill it with success. Some try to fill it with parties, gambling, entertainment, or even human relationships. It attempts to fill our emptiness with something other than what it truly needs. That is the wrong way. We have to fill our emptiness only with Jesus Christ. Amen? If so, all other things we need will come along with Jesus as a grace. That is the true blessing. So for this blessed reason, God sometimes created, creates situations that make us mourn and poor in spirit. He does this to make us look only at Jesus Christ. Some problems in our lives never are solved. No matter how hard we try, that problem never is all solved. It's so hard and painful. Apostle Paul plead with the Lord to take a thorn in his flesh away from him. But God said to Paul, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Paul's prayer was not answered as Paul wished. But Paul confessed his faith like this. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insert, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. After that, Paul lived with that weakness, a thorn in his flesh, all his whole life. My brothers and sisters, each of us has our own thorn in our lives. Sometimes it is an illness. Sometimes family member. Sometimes addiction. Sometimes relationship. Each of us has our own thorn. But we have to remember the thorn in our life, our deficiency, an unreserved problem lead us to God. That weakness becomes the channel of God's grace. And it becomes a true blessing to us. We become humble through that deficiency and weakness. Acknowledge our limitation and kneel before God. Only then can we confess before God that I was really a sinner. So please rejoice poor in spirit. Love your deficiencies, weaknesses, and pain. It will be the channel of God's grace. I pray that we can feel our hurts only with Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Secondly, Jesus taught us about blessings toward our neighbors. Let's read aloud verses 7 and 8 together. 7 and 8. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will seek God. In today's scripture, Jesus said that the blessed are the meek, the merciful, and the peacemaker. Those blessings are toward neighbors. God created humans as beings to help each other. God created man and woman, which means we must help each other. The reason why Jesus gathered his disciples into a community 
was to help one another. God gave us family and church because we need each other. We need you. We cannot lift a large stone alone, but we can lift it with several people. Also, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. In church, if this person is sick, then we comfort this person. When that person is in trouble, we comfort that person. We feel each other's needs like this. So what is the most important thing in a community like this? It is to be meek and merciful and peacemaker to others. This is a spirit we should have toward our neighbors and others. I pray that we will be able to achieve peace through the eyes of love, gentleness, and compassion rather than criticizing and condemning others and pinpointing our weaknesses. This is the blessing that Jesus taught us. It is saying to me, although I am a pastor, I am also growing because you look at me with kindness and confession. Your love and your prayers comes down like the rain and the pastor tree grows with that growth, with that grace. Also, I hope that my prayers and words will make you grow. I pray that my love and compassion towards you will make us grow. So I dream that our church community will become a rich forest. Amen? Amen. 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 The last, thirdly, there is a blessing received through devotion to God. Let's read the last verses 11 and 12 together. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you. Firstly, on my account, rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who are before you. Amen. Jesus teaches that we are blessed to be persecuted for God's sake. In some countries, people are still imprisoned or sentenced to death for believing in God. Even in our ministry, there are sometimes difficulties and persecution. Sometimes there are disregard and hatred from people. But Bible said, rejoice. Rejoice. Don't be surprised. Even if they curse and hate us, do not resent or hate them. But love them to the end. This word is getting farther away from God. And the last day will come. When Jesus comes again, industry developed significantly, AI developed, and technology also developed. AI might be better at preaching than pastor and future. Someday people may say that our prayer, our worship look foolish. But still, we faithfully carry out the ministry of the Lord step by step because that is our calling from God. So I pray, have courage and continue to devote yourself to God. The day we meet the Lord, it will return as a great blessing. My beloved brothers and sisters, the blessings Jesus taught us are different from those of the word. It may seem silly, but we know the truth. We are not people who expect hope from the earth. We are people who look for the hope of heaven. I pray that the beatitude of Christ 
may be our blessings in our whole life. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. Let's take a moment for prayer and prepare for the Holy Communion. This is the invitation from God. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart have failed to be an obedient church we have not done your will we have broken your law we have rebelled against your love we have not loved English, and we have not heard the cry of the needy forgive us we pray free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord Amen let's take a moment of silence This is the word of forgiveness. Hear the good news is Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Amen. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. My brothers and sisters, because there is one love, 
We who are many are one body, for if we all partake of the one loaf, the bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take this one. And take this. Body of Christ given for you. 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 Body of Christ came for you. Body of Christ came for you. Body of Christ came for you. Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ came for you. Christ came for you. Body of 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 Christ came for you. Christ came for you. Body of 
Christ give for you. What did Christ give for you? 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 Christ came for you. Body of 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 Christ came for you. Christ came for you. Body of 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 Christ came for you. Let's pray. Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the word in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we are going to sing the closing hymn. Please rise and praise our Lord together. Where 
shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.